Hi everyone, thank you so much for having me here and having the opportunity to talk about sustainable procurement. It's probably a new subject for some of you, but it really complements sustainable production. So let me start, yeah. So quick agenda, I'll give you a little bit of context why CBC Radio Canada implements sustainable procurement, how it supports sustainable production, and uh, yeah, let's move on. So first, maybe you're asking yourself, so what is sustainable procurement? Sustainable procurement, it, it was supposed to appear, but that's okay, you have the answer. So sustainable procurement, well, procurement is very important for every organization. And when you want to implement sustainable procurement, you need to add social and environmental to your uh, procurement decision. So usually we have our requirements and then we have our technical elements and financial. When you do sustainability, you include, you include sorry, social and environmental to your decision. So that's pretty much how you do sustainable procurement. Um, at CBC Radio Canada, the social pillar is really about reducing barriers for vendors who, from underrepresented groups. And we also want to promote vendors with equity, diversity, and inclusion practices. And for the environmental pillar, we want to promote environmental products and services, as well as vendors who have sustainability practices. So now you know a little bit more about sustainable procurement. But why is procurement important? Well, first, and I heard Daniel say, um, I, I usually see an efficient lever, but I think I prefer a driver. So it's a very efficient driver to support environmental objectives. And what you see on the right is an iceberg. And you know usually, and I'm, I'm not gonna go too much into scope and GHG emissions and all that, but the, em the emission usually that we know and we control, the direct emission from buildings and fleet that we own, are the top of uh, the iceberg. But what's underneath is really what is, um, what is indirect emissions. The travel, the corporate travel, uh, the, the, the things that we buy, so procured goods and services, are what you see below. So, Procured goods and services and capital goods are usually bigger amount of greenhouse gas emission than what we have on top. So that's why if you want to, to go into net zero carbon and reduce your production and your emissions, you need to tackle uh, sustainable procurement. You need to tackle your procured goods and services. Also, you know sustainability is in all organizations. You have sustainable experts and they do really good job at uh, raising awareness and talking about sustainability, but when you also bring it into procurement, since everybody uh, collaborates with procurement, then together we increase awareness on sustainability. So that's also going together. Um, I also want to say that procurement is a very collaborative way of working, and you'll see, and we heard this morning, you know, collaboration is key, and so, Procurement is also important to collaborate with internal and external. You probably recognize this. So at CBC Radio Canada, we have an environmental strategy, greening our story. And these are the targets you have, the, we have by 2026. And procurement is a lever to help achieve all these targets. So to reduce carbon emission, energy, we, we heard a lot about waste and recycling. A good way to reduce waste is really by procurement. Because in procurement, we control what we bring in, uh, into our building, into our, our uh, process. So, but what I really want to bring your attention is really our procurement target. So, as you can see, by 2026, we want that at least 25% of our request for proposal contains sustainability criteria. So that's really the target, and that's why we just launched our procurement initiative. So how did we develop this initiative? First, we wanted to make, uh, you know, the 25%, we want to make sure we choose the right procurement to include sustainability. We want to maximize our impact, and I'll talk more about it later. 
uh, also, I want to talk a little bit about the capacity. Sustainability is one thing, and procurement is another thing. We need to bring these two things together. So that's why this initiative is really to develop capacity, and we have an initiative that's called Sustainable Procurement Champions. And we have 27 uh, people that volunteered to support the initiative. And of course, as I said, procurement is there to help achieve the 25% target, but all the other targets. So that's the initiative in a nutshell. And now uh, I talk a little fast. Uh, so I'll let this video play. I hope we can play. It really presents the procurement, the sustainable procurement initiative. And then I invite you to listen to the voice because it's someone that's very passionate about sustainability is, and it's here, she's here. So please play this video. Is David there, David Doyle? So in this slide, there was a video to play. Oops. Hmm. Give me a couple. No, it's not working. Maybe at the end? On the corporate website? OK, sorry for that. We have a very great, but as you can see, we have this video on our corporate website. So if we don't have the chance to see it today, you can go and see it on our website. So it really presents the initiative, but I will talk about it in the next slide. So that's okay. Let's continue. So first, um, and well, just to say that the sustainable, the pro sustainable Procurement Initiative was launched in August 2023. So it's brand new, um, and we just launched the Vendor Code of Conduct. So it was really important for CBC Radio Canada to make sure that the vendors that, um, that work with us respect human rights, ethic, and the environment. And so also we want to uh, promote vendors that have sustainable policies and practices, and so we encourage our vendors to uh, establish their own policies. And so the vendor code of conduct is included in our contracts. We also launched a directive on sustainable procurement. And um, so, of course, you didn't see the video because the direct, it was explaining a little bit the directive, so I'll, I'll try to summarize the video. Um, so when we buy products, first we ask ourselves, so is there a sustainability risk? So we have some uh, question so that we can tackle the right procurement to put sustainability requirements or criteria. So we have 14 categories that we establish that when this product or service is required, we include sustainability criteria and we have support from our functional experts in sustainability. So that's for the top part. Also, depending on what we buy and the financial value of the procurement, we, um, we do supplier diversity. So when, for example, we do invitation, solicitation, we invite a vendor from an underrepresented group. So these are included in the Directive on Sustainable Procurement. Maybe I should say that the directive is really there to help uh, operationalize, operationalize, sorry, I hate this uh, word in English, um, our initiative because it tells when and how to include sustainability criteria or invite vendors from underrepresented groups. Then, when we define what actions to take, we collaborate. Uh, as I said, procurement is all about collaboration. And we collaborate with experts, but we also collaborate with our supplier councils that help us find these vendors from underrepresented groups. After, we implement sustainability. And maybe you're asking yourself, how do we implement sustainability in procurement? So there's two ways. The first way is to make it mandatory. So for example, we could say, well, the screen that's here, I want to make sure it's Energy Star certified. And so that's a way to make sure your product will reduce your energy consumption, and that, that can be mandatory. So that's one way to be mandatory. The other way is to put point rated. So you, you reserve points to sustainability, to social or environmental criteria. So that's another way of doing it. And you make sure to make a difference. We, we talked uh, earlier about cost. So that's another way of, you don't only take into consideration technical, and financial, you add sustainability and you reserve points so it makes a difference in the overall evaluation. 
And finally, we evaluate and we issue the contract. So very quickly, this is what the Directive on Sustainable Procurement is doing. Um, I talked a lot about vendors from underrepresented groups. I just wanted to say what they, who they are. So it, they are the same groups than in our progress and progress plan. Um, this is our equity, diversity, and, in, and inclusion plan. And it's, so there's five underrepresented groups. They are racialized people, women, people from LGBTQ2 plus uh, community, indigenous people, and veterans and people with disabilities. When the company is 50% or, or over owned, managed, and operated by these communities, this is a vendor from an underrepresented group. And these are the, the, the vendors that we want to reduce the barriers. Now, one thing that I really want to put some emphasis is the fact that, you know, in procurement, and we talked about nerds, we're a little bit nerd as well. So we really like to make sure it's based on science, so we rely on evidence. It's important in procurement, but it's also really important in sustainable procurement. So when we promote vendors who have environmental policies, practices, we want to make sure they're using standards. If they're measuring their greenhouse gas emission, are they following the GHG protocol? Are they reporting? Are they using CDP? Are they, like, we really want to make sure it's based on science and it's, we have evidence. It's the same thing for product and services. When we want to select product and services with lower environmental impacts, we rely on environmental certifications. We make sure that the environmental gains are real, based on science, and validated, validated sorry, by an ind independent party. So this is something that is, if you know me, five minutes, okay. If you know me, you know that's very important for me. No greenwashing in our sustainable procurement initiative. Um, as I said b before, it's very important to collaborate internally. So we have functional experts, that our expert in sustainability. I've talked about the procurement champions, but we also um, collaborate with councils, so supplier council, who uh, certify um, vendors from underrepresented groups. Um, we are members of WeBe Canada, who certifies women in business, CCAB, who certifies indigenous uh, businesses, and um, CAMC, who certifies racialized businesses. So, and we also rely on experts. We have groups that are specialized in sustainable procurement and help organization to um, promote sustainable procurement, and they have some tools. So very important, if we want to get to net zero, if we want to decarbonize our industry, we need to work together. We need to ask our supply chain to decarbonize and our vendors. So that's why we say it's, it takes a lot of people. Now, maybe the part that interests you the most, so why are we talking about sustainable procurement um, if it's a sustainable procurement production forum? So when we look at the impactful categories in Albert, you have travel and transport, that's the most important one, with the most impact, utilities, consumption, and material use and disposal. So what's what sustainable procurement can offer is to support the procurement of energy efficient, low carbon products. We support sustainable set builds, certified studios. Um, we work with, of course, the fleet, and the fleet and the travel. We find solution, we work with them. Um, the last uh, sustainable travel, we ask for greener hotels. These are all things that can be done through procurement. Uh, I talked about reduction of greenhouse gas emission. And one very important point is to support your production sustainability plan. Procurement is, can help you uh, support your plan. Of course, it helps just like your production. You have EDI. Um, um, uh, you want to div diversify and, and put EDI up front with your production. Same thing with procurement. And finally, as I said, it's a very good opportunity to engage and collaborate with stakeholders that have the same value as you. I think I'm almost done. Yeah. What? Oh, they can, we have the video. Thank you. Okay. So I will stop here with this because maybe you're saying that's very inter interesting, I think, but I, don't, I wouldn't know how to start. So these are like key tips on how to start. Whoops. Is this me? Sorry. Oh, <laughs> I'm fighting here. <laughs> okay. I won.
Perfect. So first, I want to say don't start from scratch. Resource exists. Groups exist. Find the resource. Survey your suppliers. Maybe you have suppliers in your supply chain that can support you already with lower effort. Set objective. Make sure they um, relate to the objective of your organization. Set objective. Collaborate. Uh, collaborate internally, externally. Another point, and I've heard it today, choose categories to have an impact. Don't start, don't try to do it all. Choose, let's say, three categories and uh, green, green that category or, you know, diversify your supply chain in these category. Then, very important, include sustainability in your processes. It will not function or work properly if it's not included in the procurement process. Make sure it's included in the process. I heard about, tell us how to do it, make it mandatory. Make it mandatory. The Directive on Sustainable Procurement, it makes it mandatory now at CBC Radio Canada to include sustainability. Make it mandatory in your policies. <laughs> Thank you. Build capacity. Make sure you build your capacity on sustainability across the organization. Make sure procurement talks to sustainability because that's needed. And integrate in your procurement. I, I didn't have enough room, measure, and uh, report. So I think that's it for me today. If we can play, don't forget to visit our corporate website. If you are a supplier, register to our new portal that you will see in this video. Thank you. CBC Radio Canada's supply chain management team is proud to take action to incorporate sustainability, equity, diversity, and inclusion into its business practices. Two new tools have been created to make this happen, the Vendor Code of Conduct and the Directive on Sustainable Procurement. The Vendor Code of Conduct sets out the principles and expectations that vendors must meet when doing business with CBC Radio Canada. The Directive on Sustainable Procurement has two goals. To promote goods, services and vendors that are environmentally sustainable, allowing us to reduce the environmental impact or climate risks of our operations, and to include vendors owned by members of underrepresented groups. So how will we achieve this? By embedding social and environmental strategies into the procurement process. This includes promoting products and services with a lower carbon footprint, promoting certified sustainable products and services, working with vendors who, like us, have established policies, programs, or practices that protect the environment and diversify the supply chain, reducing barriers to the participation of vendors from underrepresented groups in the corporation's procurement processes. There are many benefits to the Sustainable Procurement Initiative. It helps to reduce greenhouse gas emissions, water consumption, material use, and waste generation. This supports the objectives of our environmental sustainability strategy, greening our story. It also creates a more sustainable, circular, and inclusive supply chain. To be successful, we need to maximize engagement with our vendors throughout the supply chain. We have therefore developed a new portal for vendors interested in doing business with us to register. The portal allows vendors owned by members of underrepresented groups to self-identify. Environmentally sustainable vendors can also share information about their sustainable goods, services, and practices. We invite you to register to be added to our database and access more opportunities. As the national public broadcaster, we take our social and environmental responsibilities seriously. Join us in our commitment and together let's create a supply chain that's more environmentally sustainable, equitable, inclusive and diverse.